The Atheist and Christian Book Club is a monthly gathering of believers and skeptics respectfully discussing important books from both perspectives. Atheist apologist Bill Cluck and Christian apologist James Walker, president of Watchman Fellowship, co-founded the Atheist and Christian Book Club in April of 2017. Each month, discussion alternates between a Christian and an atheist book. The club meets on the first Friday of the month for a free meal at 6 p.m., followed by the book discussion at 7 p.m. The club also streams each meeting on Facebook Live. Often the club is able to interact with book authors, either in person or by pre-recorded teleconferenced interviews in which the author can interact and address specific questions from club members. Some of the authors who have joined us in the past include Dr. Frank Turek, Dr. Melissa Kane Travis, John W. Loftus, and Sasha Sagan, daughter of the late planetary astronomer Dr. Carl Sagan. The club has even been mentioned in the UK on the premier Christian radio show Unbelievable with Justin Brierley. The following is a broadcast of James and Bill talking about the club on Point of View, a Dallas-based, nationally syndicated, issues-oriented talk radio program with a Christian perspective. Point of View airs on 265 stations across the U.S., reaching around 1 million listeners. To find out more about the Atheist and Christian Book Club, visit atheistchristianbookclub.com or follow the events page of the Atheist and Christian Book Club on Facebook. Across America, live, this is Point of View. Kirby Anderson. This hour, we want to spend some time talking about the Atheist Christian Book Club. And you might say, well, did I hear that right? Yes, you did. And I think it's going to be a great conversation. So, first of all, we will give you a chance to join the conversation. That number is 1-800-351-1212. But I'm going to spend just a little bit of time, first of all, talking about the history. And I'm going to work my way around the roundtable. You can watch the program if you would like. Uh, of course, you can listen as well. And the first guest I'm going to go to is James Walker. Well, he doesn't need a lot of introduction. President of Watchman Fellowship. Individual was fourth generation Mormon with 25 years of experience in ministry. He's been on the program for decades. We've known each other for decades. And it's great to have you in studio with us. Great again. to be back, Kirby. Really appreciate it. And I want you in just a minute to tell the story about how this came about. But let me also introduce somebody I met for the first time, Bill Cluck, who is a graduate of Virginia Tech. Uh, in history and uh, became a Christian earlier on and then left the faith 30 years ago and has been serving as the outreach coordinator with the Metroplex Atheist and is also one of the co-founders of the Atheist and Christian Book Club. So great to have you in studio with us. And then finally, let me also bring to um, the conversation Daniel Ray. Daniel's been with us a couple of different times. Usually we're talking about intelligent design, astronomy, or a variety of other things. But <laughs> one time we were even talking about cultural apologetics. That's right. And Daniel, of course, uh, had a master's thesis on planet Narnia, worked with uh, Dr. Michael Ward. We've talked about some of his books and videos, and uh, you got involved in this as well, didn't you? Yes. Uh, several years ago, I forget, even forgot how it happened, but uh, I was in email contact with James, and I, I was fascinated by this idea. It was right at my apologetically speaking and it's been a wonderful learning experience in, in how to engage uh, people with the gospel that that don't see it like you do really face to face so the incarnate dialogue is really what I've enjoyed about it well let's go to each one of you James first of all I'll give you the first chance and as you go to the website point of view.net we have a very good link and just scroll down to the atheist Christian book club and there is a great video that people can watch and maybe even pass on to others and I might mention that even though, uh, James, this takes place in Dallas, and certainly Dallas people can attend because it's on Facebook, anybody that has access to the Internet can ha participate in this, can't they? Yes, we we uh, we run it on Facebook Live as it's happening. You can participate, and we have the last year's worth of book clubs available to watch and see what happened and uh, unpack that. But uh, I met Bill Cluck. I was actually preaching at, at Cottonwood Church um, and here in the Metroplex, and uh, he was there. 
and uh, engaged with me. He thought I was a pastor of the church. I was a guest um, uh, pastor, I guess you would say, preacher. And uh, he was trying to get a meet an atheist Sunday. And so I said, what's this all about and all? And But he found out I lived in Arlington. It was just right down the street. Our office is a half a block from the place where the Metroplex atheists meet every Wednesday. And he invited me there. I got to know some of them for about a year. Uh, I would regularly, once or twice a month, go and spend some time at this bar down the street uh, talking to the atheists, the Metroplex atheists. And so he had an idea of maybe we need to do something where we could take this conversation and, and make it into some more opportunities and things. And so we put our heads together. Why don't we have a book club? We've been talking about books, uh, both Christian books and atheist books. And so uh, about almost three years ago, our first book club, we alternate. We'll do a Christian book and then an atheist book. And uh, it, it is a monthly gathering uh, of both skeptics and believers who respectfully discuss important books from both perspectives. And uh, we're pretty successful on the respect, uh, being respectable part of it. We, it has gotten a little lively a yeah. few times. But, but remarkably, over time, Kirby, we, we get to be friends. And uh, you, know, um, you get to know them better. And, and one of the things that happened to me is... Um, of course, I speak in churches all over the country and, 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 and speak to Christian groups, and all my ideas sound brilliant in church. But when you get with a room full of atheists, and there's 25 atheists, and they're, and they're going to critique what you're saying, you'll find out, hey, maybe some of your ideas are better than others. And I think it's helped me, being in the book club, to be a better thinker. At least yeah. I hope it has. Well, and as you well know, my background for many years before I ever did this was speaking on college campuses all over the country. And so, again, you run into that. And really, most of the audiences I run into are pretty hostile to some of the things I have to say. And so it's a good place to test out some of your ideas. So, Bill, let me get to know you a little bit better because um, we'll put you closer to the microphone here. But would love to know a little bit more about how you guys came together and um, what you want to fill out the rest of the story about. Well, just like James said, I kind of met him at a Cottonwood Church. And, uh, you know, we became friends and uh, it's just been a fantastic relationship. You couldn't ask for a better partner. I mean, because we have to decide every month, you know, what book to choose. For sure. And, you know, we'll have disagreements, but ultimately, you know, we have to make a decision. And, uh, you know, most of the time we're on the same page. Yeah. And it's nice talking to people like Ray and James, because even though we're on opposite sides, we have a lot in common in that we love apologetics. Yeah. We can, when we talk about Josephus or the Q document or whatever, we are on the same page. You don't have to go to a lengthy explanation. And it's just really refreshing to talk to people, uh, whether it's on apologetics uh, with James or with cosmology with Ray that just know so much about their subjects. And I've learned a tremendous amount about Mormonism from James. He's just, just a, wealth of information. He is a walking encyclopedia. Oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. But it is interesting, before we go on, I, there is a sense in which you agree with the rules of the debate. Now, there's, uh, in the old days, when I used to speak to the North Texas Humanist Association, things like that, everybody in the room at least believes that data uh, is uh, certainly worth considering and that maybe we can find truth. But in this post-truth culture where you have your view of truth and you have a different view of truth, I'll present information. People go, well, that's your truth. It's not my truth. But at least I get the sense that you kind of have that same kind I, of understanding of what is evidence and how to use that evidence, which I think really provides an opportunity for dialogue, don't well, you think? absolutely. And what's an interesting debate within the atheist community is the historicity of Jesus. You have the mythicist camp that believes Jesus was just a myth. Yeah. And then the uh, group like myself who definitely believe in a historical Jesus. And we actually had David Fitzgerald, who we interviewed and read his book, Nailed. Remember that? Yes. Uh, and he, I interviewed him, he would just not give an inch. I just think there's just tremendous evidence for the historical Jesus from a variety of sources. You know, there are independent sources throughout the Mediterranean that all came to the con same conclusion. And uh, so, you know, we do have some real common ground here. Yeah, I think so. And I know uh, one of the influential people in your life was Bart Ehrman. And he uh, said, you know, come on, don't tell, me that, yeah, don't tell me that we don't have a Jesus here. Yeah. And Dan, I don't want to give you less than a minute, so I'm going to okay. just go to the break and come back to hear a little bit from you as well. But uh, if you would like to join us, by the way, we already have a caller or two. So if you'd like to join, one 800 
351-1212. And I thought you would really enjoy knowing about this uh, Christian atheist uh, debate or this atheist Christian book club, however you want to put which one goes first. And we certainly want you to participate in the conversation here as well. And more importantly, we wanted to give you a sort of a preview of some of the kinds of things that have been discussed. Maybe we'll talk about one or two of the books that have been put on the table. And I know that Daniel Ray's got some really good things to share, especially from his own experience. So we'll come back to him. And if you find yourself saying, I'd like to know about each one of these individuals, we've tried to do our best to give you a bio for each one of them so that you can follow what they are actually doing. Uh, and so then you can go to the Atheist Christian Book Club. It's atheistchristianbookclub.com. Pretty simple to find. But we have all the links there. We have information about the meetings, the blog, uh, contact. And if you want to start um, participating, either face-to-face -face or over Facebook Live, we're going to make that possible for you as well. We'll be right back. Of all the things that I have read, chapter two of Jesus Interrupted is the one that made me worry the most that inerrancy might be true. <laughs> because if you've got to go to those lengths to try to find problems, then you're scraping the bottom of the barrel. You're listening to Point of View, your listener-supported source for truth. Back once again, if you'd like to join our conversation, 1-800-351-1212. And we'll get to one of those phone calls in just a minute. But James Walker and Daniel Ray and Bill Cluck. And um, Daniel, I kind of gave you short shrift, so I wanted to get some of your <laughs> comments. Because as sure. you said, we've had a chance to see these two individuals bring together the Atheist Christian Book Club. You showed up. And you keep going, and now you're actually working on it. So it must be something that's pretty intellectually stimulating. Tell well, us more. Well, it is. It's, it really was fantastic. I was uh, uh, really surprised. As I've discovered this uh, shortly after I completed my master's degree at HBU in apologetics. And so I went quickly from the abstract uh, realm of ideas and learning about atheism and books and, and videos and things to actually engaging, as James said earlier. Uh, you know, apologetics sounds wonderful uh, when you're talking to the choir, but when you get out in front of people that don't like to sing, it's it's really difficult to convince them that music is a good thing. Yeah. And so the Atheist Christian Book Club for me was uh, really getting involved with the incarnate relationships uh, in, in the dialogue, which is so important because, as you know, the central hope of the Christian faith is the incarnation and Jesus engaging people in the body, God coming down in a body and talking to us. And so for me, it is in this day and age of social media where everything is an image and everything is on the computer, uh, in-person engagement with skeptics uh, really has been a wonderful uh, way to for me to grow into my faith and how to uh, how to properly engage in the conversation. Let's see if we can take a phone call. We'll go to Jim, We're listening on the internet, first time listener, and I guess you've been to one of the book clubs. Uh, tell us more. Hi, um, my name is Jim. I'm from Midlothian. I just like to say, yeah, I, I've been going to uh, in-person. Uh, for the last, uh, I guess, three years or so now, and I would just like to share how, just how wonderful groups like this are, and I'd like to see them pop up, you know, other places. Uh, there's ways to get involved online as well. The Friends of the Atheist and Christian Book Club uh, on Facebook as well. There's lively discussions. And what makes this, uh, I believe, different than pretty much any other group out there, it's just amicable, and it's non-confrontational, and I think in this divided culture, that we're experiencing now politically, socially, along religious lines. It's groups like this that can help bridge that gap and counteract that. Well, that sounds good to me. Um, any other things that you learned from the club just before I let you go? Um, well, I did not come there to change minds. I I came to seek truths. And although I'm an atheist, and really no one, no one really changes their minds, uh, but I have changed my mind on uh, lesser issues four times in the last three years. So um, if you come with an open mind, um, it, it's a really great thing. And, it, you know, not, not dogmatic and don't be set in your ways. Be willing to learn. 
Very good. Um, Bill, I, one of the things I have is a link to the Atheist Christian Book Club on your uh, picture there as well. But uh, talk about that, because uh, is it a situation and is it a setting which atheists feel comfortable in? Talk oh, about absolutely. That. I think yeah. uh, both Christians and atheists feel comfortable. And I want to mention about Jim, who has a podcast, The Atheist Edge. When we met him uh, three years ago, Jim was more of an aggressive, confrontational atheist, and he has soften up immensely <laughs> it's we me and james comment about it how uh nicer he is how thoughtful he is now i mean you might have something well, to he, say james yeah, he's more knowledgeable i mean it's like uh he really has studied the issues he reads the books i mean he's um uh y- you can tell he interacts with the information and so when when jim says something i know he's atheist but when jim says something at the club i know he's got a lot of thought into it he's going to raise a good point uh, he is going to maybe challenge me, and uh, and I enjoy being challenged, and mm-hmm. and and I think I've had maybe raised my own good points. And oddly enough, Jim has been. We had Frank Turk who wrote, "I don't have enough faith to be an atheist," and he was very impressed with the fine tuning argument, mm-hmm. uh, which he said had uh, very compelling evidence. And uh, hadn't lost his faith, but, uh, you know, he just he was honest and open enough to to look at the evidence mm-hmm. and to agree that there is good evidence. And with Brady, one of the uh, per- persons on staff, they had a nice debate on the uh, problem in Luke where you have the census uh, and you have the uh, mm-hmm. two uh, things with Corinius, the two dates. And they had a nice uh, back and forth. And apparently Brady found a inscription uh with uh, Quirinius as a military governor at one time and and Jim said hey it looks like good evidence I'm open to it which was very commendable don't you mm-hmm. think well yeah. appreciate Jim calling and if you'd like to join the conversation 1-800-351-1212 let me go around the round table again how do you choose some of those books I think you got one coming up on the secret if I've uh, read correctly that, this was that. this was a book I co-authored and for over a year they said do one of your books and unfortunately I don't think I, I've written any books that would be good for the club you know but yeah. uh, this is one that maybe we'll have a kumbaya this month uh, or in just de- in uh, December uh, because we're going to be um, talking about really pantheism and yes. this idea of the secret, um, mm-hmm. which comes from like a new age spirituality. And I, I think it's going to be something that for once, finally, everybody in the room is probably going to agree this yeah. is yeah. not true. The <laughs> thoughts become reality exactly. and that kind of stuff. And that's part of it, too. As uh, Bill, when we talk about this, there are times when sometimes the Christian and the atheists say, Okay, we may disagree on some points, but we definitely have some problems with some of the ideas of the New Age movement and some of the super spirituality and things like that. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. This, the laws of attraction so forth, I just think, are nonsense. Um, oh, and another thing, you know, talking about our books, a perfect example is because we'll try to choose things that relate to each other. Uh, Bart Ehrman wrote a book, How Jesus Became God. Right. So a perfect Very compliment the, book. Yeah. the next month was How God Became Jesus by the uh, Christian authors like Mike Lacona mm-hmm. and Michael Bird, who I interviewed uh, out of Australia, who ha- is just a brilliant guy, great sense of humor. And Craig and- Evans. And Craig, Craig Evans, Evans uh, Craig down Evans. there at Houston he's, Baptist, he's who's a with us. Yeah. fantastic scholar. And I, I, I ta- he talked about uh, the crucifixion of Jesus and the nail that they found in the uh, ossuary. And just so you have to be open and listen to both sides. And, and another one we did was uh, Ray's book uh, on cosmology. The story uh, of the cosmos. story <laughs> of the cosmos. And we dovetailed that with Pale Blue Dot by... Um, um, Carl, Carl Sagan, Carl and we, uh, James interviewed his daughter, which was yeah. very nice. I just Actually, mentioned, uh, Daniel, that we have a link right now to the story of the cosmos.com because yes. we still want to mm. promote that book, don't we? <laughs> yeah. So as they click on your picture, they can find that. Of course, they scroll down. They can also find the Atheist Christian Book Club. Uh-huh. What are your thoughts about that? Well, uh, you know, what Bill just said, it, it, it's, it was a fantastic opportunity to be a part of the story of the cosmos, the book, working with so many other scholars like William Lane Craig and such. Uh, but a, a double honor was uh, having uh, Carl Sagan's daughter uh, Amazing. available yes. to mm-hmm. uh, being willing to inter- be interviewed. I told her about our book club. I found her. I met her on Twitter, and she was amicable to the idea of an interview. And so I was able to interview her. Um, but thanks to the experience that I garnished working with and talking to the atheists in the book club, there there was a certain and sasha doesn't identify herself as an atheist but but it 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 gave me the skill just being a part of the book club to be able to ask the right questions that weren't 
you know, gotcha questions. They were conversational. They were uh, amicable. And I just, it was just fascinating to be able to, to listen. And I think that's one thing the book club does help foster is listening to people that you don't agree with, really listening to them. And to be able to, when you do that, you, then you can you can learn how to continue a dialogue in a way that people will respect and understand your point of view. An example of that is when Frank Turek came, you know, I thought he disrespected Christopher Hitchens in his debate with him, so I wasn't a big fan of him. But then, you know, at the break, I'm talking to him in the kitchen, and I'm relating to him as a person. You know, right. we're talking about New Jersey, and he had some wonderful arguments on the DNA, how mm -hmm. DNA seems to what makes uh, proteins is the structure and the order of the amino acids. It's not the chemical makeup. I thought that was a good argument. He uh, talked about the mathematics and how uh, we were able to understand them and that he just made excellent arguments, of course, the moral argument. And Christians need to know that there are good arguments for the existence of God. You know, atheists believe we might have some good arguments, uh, you know, against, but, uh, I'm just saying learn the arguments, read the books that support your cause. That's what's frustrating to me a lot of times. Mm -hmm. isn't it? Well, one thing we do, Kirby, is we try to uh, interact with the authors as well. So even though we only have about 20 to 35 people at the club, we, we've been able to have contact most of the time either by uh, video interview or either actually in person. We will have the author there that we can the, both the atheists and the Christians can ask questions. That is so good. And again, atheistchristianbookclub.com is uh, one of the links. And I might just mention that after we come back from the break, uh, I might talk a little bit about how if people want to support anything you are doing. Of course, Watchman Fellowship, I know you're coming to year end. You're looking for financial support. for If there's a way to people can support the Atheist Christian Book Club or some of the other things, I wanted to encourage people during the break to go to the websites because we have provided one for each one of you. And I encourage you, if you want to ask questions, make comments, or even suggest possible books, that will be the case. And in this last half hour, let's open up the phones and open line. Maybe you have some comments or questions for the Christians or the atheists around the table here. That number is 1-800-351-1212. We'll be back right after these important messages. When you give to Point of View, does it make a difference? Jeremy Dyes would tell you that it does. He grew up listening to Point of View in the back seat of his mom's car, and it helped to shape his thinking. I had parents that were able to sit across from me at the dinner table after we listened to Marlon Maddox and Kirby Anderson years ago and think through what the scriptures say about these issues of current significance in our lives. That's only possible because Point of View has come along and ministered into my life and made me who I am today. And here I am today defending religious liberty, partly because Marlon Maddox and Penn Dexter and, and Kirby Anderson were the ones that were pushing me towards all that. They taught me how to think through these issues. They didn't tell me what to think. They taught me how to think. Each gift you give will change lives. Not every point of view listener will become a Jeremy, but if they listen for very long, they will be changed. And that will change how they impact and affect the lives of the people around them. So make that decision to change a life today. Join the truth team and boldly stand for truth in a world of lies, distortion, and information manipulation. Go to pointofview.net or call 1-800-347-5151. That's 1-800-347-5151. Point of View will continue after this. But we've been doing this for a couple of years um, and we have a meal and uh, we sit down, we talk to each other. Um, you know, nobody has, I don't think there's been any official conversions one way or the other. <laughs> that you know of. That, that I know of. of, but we do we do sit down face has to face anyone, with people. Have any two people fallen in love from opposite sides? Uh, I'll have to ask James about that. I don't know exactly. <laughs> not that, not that he knows. are listening to Point of View. The opinions expressed on Point of View do not necessarily reflect the views of the management or staff of this station. And now, here again, 
is Kirby Anderson. Final half hour, if you'd like to join our conversation, 1-800-351-1212. Let's go around the roundtable for just a minute, talk about some of the resources, the web page, Facebook page, and everything. James Walker, let me come to you first, because Watchman Fellowship is a great organization. I mention it many times, especially when people are learning or want to know something about a religious group. But uh, both that website, as well as the Atheist Christian Book Club and the Facebook page, talk about all the places where people can find information. Right. Our, our uh, Watchman main website is watchman.org, mm-hmm. and uh, we have tons of articles. We have an a index of uh, cults and religions on there that you can look up groups and kind of get a thumbnail a, a, a appraisal of, of that particular group. Uh, but we're focusing there on interfaith evangelism. So apologetics, defending the faith of how do you reach somebody in another worldview, another religion? Uh, how can we you know, share the gospel with them? And then uh, our main uh, site for the Atheist and Christian Book Club is atheistchristianbookclub.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, that is a shared thing. This is not mine. It's, it's uh, you know, Bill's co-founder. He's the atheist. I'm the other co-founder. I'm the Christian. And uh, so there we have uh, for over a year's worth of video that you can watch of past clubs, yes. upcoming clubs. You can um, you can actually reserve a spot if you're local and want, want to join us. We start off with a free meal and then uh, have some good conversation. The meal go right into the club and uh, we, we have that available. And then uh, there's a uh, on Facebook. We also have Friends of Atheist Christian Book Club, and that's where you can actually right. interact uh, all through the month, uh, not at the club, and, and, and put your ideas out there and have conversation with others, uh, uh, either uh, on the other side of the equation, the Christian talking to the atheist or the atheist talking with the Christian. Very good. Bill Clark, let's if we can talk about uh, Metroplex Atheist, if you want to contact you, or even just go through the Atheist Christian Book Club, what's available there? Well, if you go to Jake Gilligan's on Wednesday at like 4 or 5 o'clock to 8, uh, you can go and interact with atheists, yeah. and they will welcome uh, Christians, just like they did with James. Very good. And uh, or the Mid Cities Theology Meetup, uh, which is on 121 Glade with Todd Hedgecock, where I've learned more about Calvinism than I ever <laughs> wanted to know. <laughs> so again, if uh, people are having this go past real fast, again, we do have all that at our website, pointofview.net. And Daniel, we didn't post all of your Facebook page, but if they go to at least the Cosmos page, they'll find some of that. But talk about some of the other places where people can follow you. You. Yeah, so we have uh, the story of the cosmos dot com where you can contact uh, us, me directly, and um, I'm also active on Twitter uh, at story underscore cosmos, and that's just my own Twitter handle that I interact regularly with Christians and non-believers there. And then I also do a little podcast on Patreon, uh, Patreon dot com slash Good Heavens. I've been doing it for two years with my co-host Wayne, who is also in the book, and we just talk about the universe from a Christian perspective. And so those are couple of uh, platforms that I have presently right now. Very good. Bill, let me come to you for just a minute because it does seem to me that already you've talked about a few times where you said, hmm, I actually heard something on the other side that I hadn't heard before. Were a few of those sort of aha moments uh, surfacing over this last year for you? Well, they were kind of disturbing, especially, like I said, Frank Turk and uh, Melissa. Melissa, who was... Melissa Kane Travis. Melissa Kane, yes. Brilliant girl yes. who just made yeah, some a smart woman fantastic arguments um you know from the scientific point of view that uh, how do how can we understand the laws of nature mm-hmm. why in the world would that make sense to us mm-hmm. and to be fair you know honest um one of the great arguments against atheists is the evolutionary argument against naturalism mm-hmm. how can we as evolved creatures actually understand the world and science if we've just evolved with all the mishaps and uh you know trial and error and you know that was a very uh, compelling argument you yeah. know uh, and so, you know, Greg Kokel's going to be on next week. And, of course, his book, Tactics, talks about, you know, yes. feelings of guilt and all sorts of things that don't fit in an evolutionary point of view. But, James, I want to ask the same question. Were there some times when you said, wait a minute, I did Uh-oh. not know atheists believe that? Or I didn't know that. That's a much better argument than I thought it was. Yeah. It, it, again, some of, some of the um, uh, arguments that I would have, and, and I would think, well, this works great. You know, all my Christian friends love that argument. And I float it out there, and it, it gets shot down. And mm-hmm. I'm thinking... Okay, let me go back to the drawing board on that. This is why I think it helps me be a, a better um, a better thinker, I'm hoping. And w- one of the things is uh, the reason I started this, and I do spend a lot of time on it. I try to justify how much time I spend on it. I enjoy it. I spend a lot of time <laughs> yeah. on it. But, uh, you know, you really, 
and I knew this all along, but you reach more people by talking with them than talking about them. Very, very true. And, and uh, you, there's only so much you can get out of the, reading the book until you spend time with people. And I, I used to say at every club meeting, this is a friendly conversation that we're friendly. And, and you know, uh, eventually I had a number of my atheists say, no, no, James, we're not friendly. We are friends. And, and looking back on it, we are. And mm-hmm. although we're on the other side of the issue, one thing I love about Bill and Jim, who called earlier, and some of my atheist friends, is um, while we're on the other opposite sides of the issue, we all get it. This is the issue. Everything revolves around the question, is there a God? And if so, what has God said? And so in some ways, I, I do have more in common than with some of my Christian friends who they're Christian, but they don't really care about those issues very mm-hmm. much. No, and don't really have the, any kind of heart. Bill, you put your hand up. Uh, yeah. what, uh, remember Francis Collins? Who oh, wrote, yes. What was oh. the book he wrote? Um, the Language, language of, of God. The yeah. Language of God. So I read Stephen Meyer's book, The Signature of the Cell, where he gave yes, some incredible evidence about how RNA, there's like huge problems of having RNA come into DNA, to uh, eventually become DNA. And then I read Francis Collins, who's a Christian, who gave some good arguments for evolution about the ty- you know C um, gene how it's been deactivated and evolution seems to be the best case for it. So these things are really complex. They're really nuanced. The arguments are difficult. The cosmological ones, the biological ones. So you don't have to have all the answers, and you you know just be open to the evidence and. Try to do the best you can. One of the things we do, Kirby, for the club is to try to make it user-friendly. We understand that a lot of people that are interested in the topic, they're not readers. And so we'll have a book, and we'll say, this is our book for next month. Uh, The whole book's fair game, but here are the three focused chapters. Mm -hmm. And so we give that. And if you don't have time to read the book, here's a YouTube video. If you watch that YouTube video, you'll be conversant enough to be here and have the discussion. So we we try to take people where they are. In our culture, a lot of people, you don't read a lot of books. And so, but we want to get them to, to take them where they are and to bring them one step further to get them in the conversation. And uh, I think that's one thing I get feedback from the club that that's helpful. You were talking about science. It just occurred to me that last week we had uh, Michael Gillen with us. And, of course, he was the ABC science editor and, uh, of course, has been on a number of programs. But his new book, The End of Life as We Know It, and he now lives in Dallas. Mm, so you mm. could actually get the ABC mm. oh, science yeah. editor yeah. in there. Yeah. And, and Michael's actually in Denver today because he was doing something. He's actually trying to put together uh, kind of a film company, but he's done some of that. So that'd be another one. And talk about some of these individuals that would be a draw. Yeah. Get to Nancy Piercy or some of those other yeah. kind mm-hmm. of people that would really be a draw. You'd have to uh, knock out some walls. Well, you know, uh, some of them. What's interesting, and one of the things that the book club has done for me, you know, you, you think as a new author, I thought, you know, well, you have a book and you, somehow there's a magical except people will just magically accept what you say because you have a book just kind of in the back of my mind i'm thinking this but i wish yeah <laughs> but, you know I'm, it's a new author naivety whatever but one of the fun things one of the wonderful things about the book club that has been a joy for me is to be able to take uh to take the ideas break them down and because you really don't know what you know until you have to explain it to somebody right. that mm-hmm. that doesn't See it your way. Uh, as James has been saying, you think these arguments are really sound and they're very convincing, and then you try to explain it to somebody who doesn't share your point of view, and suddenly, oh my gosh, I have to think of a better way to explain that. Uh, it's not that you're going to necessarily win them to your side, per se, as much as it is what I've learned is that if you're going to come with knowledge or you're going to come with experience, you really have to, in our book club, you really have to, um, you don't have to know everything. But you certainly do realize the necessity of taking ownership for what you know and to be able to share it and, and not necessarily be an authority, but at least share with people that you're sincere, compassionate, and people can see all that. So it's a combination of knowing people, getting to know people personally, having a, a, a good general knowledge of your subject material, which I think most of our club members do. And then to, to, to the, the interpersonal communication is all important. So it's a it's a it's a triune com- complex triune uh, amalgam of, of different aspects let's take a break when we come back uh, again we encourage you to visit the website pointofview.net or go directly to atheistchristianbookclub.com either way is a good way to find some of that information and um, just um, thought i'd mention at least one more book michael gillian's book would be one that i would certainly think would be easy since he's right here in the dallas area more times than not and of course all sorts of other potential ideas that you might want to pass on to them visit the website we'll come back with more right after this
just molecular machines, if we're just moist robots, if we're just driven completely by the laws of physics, how are we reasoning? Now, back to Point of View, your listener-supported source for truth. We have a few more minutes talking about the Atheist Christian Book Club. And Daniel, let me come to you for just a minute because I think you have a good illustration of one of the reasons why I think this is such a good idea. We have these intellectual silos, and over the years when I've done some debates on policy or science or whatever, I'll sometimes get the sense that somebody I've done a debate, and I haven't done a lot of them, but I've done enough of those, mm -hmm. that the other side doesn't even know that I was going to use that argument. Never heard that before. Now, most people that are doing debates usually read your stuff and mm -hmm. see some of the other debates, yeah. but there is a world that where we just sort of read all our own people and we sometimes don't even know there's an argument outside of our little silo. And mm -hmm. you sort of ran into that the other day, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Um, talking to uh, Carl Sagan's daughter, Sasha, uh, for our interview for the book club, she was remarkable. She was wonderful. And I, I assured her that it wasn't my conversation with her was not going to be a debate, um, but that I would ask her some questions for our atheists and Christians to so she can give an answer. And and we and I we agreed that that what she said was not necessarily representative of her father, and we understood that. Uh, so I started off about halfway through our conversation. We were talking about her book, which I had read. She actually sent me a copy of it, and it was, she was very cordial about that. Uh, and so I asked what I thought would be a very simple question. I said, uh, "How come, from either you or your father, that the universe does not count as evidence for God's existence?" And I could tell from her response that <clears throat> she was probably, at the very least, not expecting the question. And it seemed, uh, you know, she did answer it, but but it was a sort of for me in the defining moment of the interview where I, I realized uh, she she was not ready for the the question. I mean, she answered it as as a skeptic would, but I think uh, I think it's those kinds of moments where you bring something up and maybe your 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 interlocutor has not thought of that, and then it's the diplomacy of how do you. Okay, I gotcha. Or, or do you do you continue to ask questions? Or, or you know, the, the 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 interpersonal nature of when somebody recognizes maybe you've made a point, do you jump on the wall and and declare victory, or do you how do you continue the conversation after that? So it was really I was not trying to play you know gotcha with her, but it was it was just a a very a good experience for me to learn personally how to how to handle those kinds of questions when they come up in, in debates and things. You know, Bill, I would say there are a lot of Christians that have a lot of misconceptions of what an atheist is like. So even coming to a meeting like this has them go, oh, I didn't know you believed that, or I didn't know you thought that way. Well, atheists are all over the place. Recently, the Atheist Edge had a podcast of uh, TJ going to a Trump rally. Here in Dallas. <laughs> so uh, he's a conservative Christian, as is Robert Price, who's one of the big time atheists. So, you know, it's a broad spectrum, you know, that we have. Sure. And I wanted to tell a little quick story about, uh, we had Tim McGrew, who's one of our favorite and I, people. And we've had Tim here many mm -hmm. times. We so, love Tim. So someone uh, asked a question, I, and I just kind of interrupted him. I said, well, there's historical evidence in the Bible. There's uh, fictional evidence. And there's quasi-historical and he goes, well, thanks for that confession of faith, but I believe he asked me the question. So <laughs> that is so witty. So we, you know, admire uh, Christians that have wit and humor and so forth, which sadly is lacking in the atheist community. Yeah. So. And if you uh, want to play chess, never play Tim McGrew or his oh, daughter, yes. who is one of the wow. best in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Phenomenal. As a matter of fact, beat Mike Lacono with her back to it. <laughs> wow. uh, these are these are really talented families yeah, right. indeed. Uh, uh, any things that maybe you learned or maybe some of the differences that uh, surfaced and uh, maybe said, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, well, Bill's right. You you learn that you, you have this picture in your head of all atheists are going to be a certain age. Age, they're going to be grumpy. They're going to be, you know, yeah. the typical prototypical atheist. No, they're all over the map. And and one of the early early conversations we had, it was like uh, one of them asked me, "What well, do you believe in predestination? God predestines things, and there's no real freedom." And I'll say, "Well, I answer that, but first, I'd like to. Do, do you believe that there's such a thing as freedom?" And uh, I was reading Sam Harris's book. Uh, free will, where he argues that the mm. mind is material, therefore there's no such thing yeah. as free will. Well, the interesting thing was the rest of the uh, rest of the discussion was the atheists arguing with each other about that. Yes, uh, half on one side, half on the <laughs> other. Oh, so I've run into it's that. not a monolithic thing. And yeah. uh, so, but all of it, what it does for me, uh, being part of the atheist and Christian book club, 
is it gets me out of the echo chamber. Right. And I can learn a lot about atheism as a worldview by reading, and that's very important, but you you only really learn how to interact with people by doing it. Yeah. Now, both of you have a similar com- uh, situation in that you were both converts of some sort, a convert mm-hmm. from Mormonism to Christianity, a convert from Christianity to atheism. And so in some respects, it gives you a sort of a broader view, I've gotten the sense, you do run into some people that have this tunnel vision. They've been a Christian all their life. They've always gone to Christian school, or they grew up in an atheist home. You know, I grew up in Berkeley. I've, I have a real understanding of what that's like mm-hmm. to just only know people that are like you, only know liberal, progressive, secularists. Okay, so, and so in some respects, you bring to the table an open-mindedness that is still hard to find here in America, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's I admire for James for leaving the Mormon faith because I've known Mormons, and it is a lot tougher than, you know, if you're just a casual Christian leaving the faith. I've asked several qu- Christians, uh, or several atheists, rather, at our club, um, just in, in private conversation, if you had sufficient proof that Christianity was true, would you then be willing to, to worship Jesus? And... I've got different answers. Uh, The majority have said no, actually. Uh, But there are some that said, no, I've had sufficient evidence. But then they reversed the question on me. James, have you had sufficient proof (laughs) that Christianity was not true? And I said, touche. You know, that's a good question. (laughs) I know the correct answer. The correct answer would be you go with truth no matter where it leads. And uh, I don't know what I would do because I'm not in that situation. The only thing I have to go on is when I used to believe in Mormonism with all my heart, when I got the evidence that the Book of Mormon was not true and that Joseph Smith was not a true prophet, I was willing to lose family, friends, and and make that switch. And I hope I would still have that courage to do the right thing now. But I, you really don't know until you get to that point, would you do the right thing? And let me tell you, uh, James has come across people like John Loftus, some of the biggest, uh, David Fisher, some of the biggest atheist hitters out there and what if you know the arguments i've been preaching this to christians for when i used to be a christian i said get the bad news out okay expose them before they go to college because nothing's worse than getting blindsided by an argument you don't know right and there's nothing either these two guys I could say, or probably anybody else could say, that would just totally blindside them and throw them off the rails. Yes, and we talked about that yesterday because we talked about the mind games camp. You know, Dr. Yeah. Ray Bolin mm-hmm. pretends to be an atheist and asks really tough questions. And within minutes, I see these kids, some of whom have come from homeschool, Christian school, or maybe they were in the public schools, they all start looking at their shoes because mm-hmm. they don't want exactly. anybody to call on them because they have never, they can sometimes give you the what, but not the why. They can give you the cliche and that's it. And so. Well, well Sean McDowell, who we read yeah. his book, he uh, does his coat thing where he puts on the atheist he does the coat. Same thing. And the Christian said, are those things true? Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. And takes them to Berkeley and, uh, mm-hmm. and takes them to Salt Lake City and places yes. like that. Yeah. We're just about out of time. But again, I want people to go to the atheistchristianbookclub.com. And uh, let's talk about the next meeting because some of our listeners might say, well, okay, you've convinced me Friday, December 6th, right? Yes. And so they can tune in and see it on Facebook Live and they can actually suggest future books and those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. So. We have somebody monitor the social media there so you can ask your question, make your comment, and we'll bring it up for the whole group. And if you're in the Dallas area on Friday, December 6th at uh, 7 p.m., go to Arlington. It has the address, and you can actually go and watch all these people that we've been talking about as well as a couple of others participate in the event. So. Uh, I want to thank all three of you for being here today. And James, Bill, great to meet you. Yes, and Daniel, here. I will see thank you in you, the Kirby. future. And I hope that you've appreciated this conversation about the Atheist Christian Book Club. We do need to take a break. So when we do, we'll come back again next week to have a chance to chat with you. We'll be running tapes on Thursday and Friday, but uh, we hope to play this again. And I will cover over this conversation at the moment so that we can uh, have it lead into the next set of interviews. But I hope that you take the time to find out about the Atheist Christian Book Club, and we'll try to announce it next week, see if we get more people to show up. Have a great Thanksgiving. We'll see you back here on Monday.
To find out more about the Atheist and Christian Book Club, visit atheistchristianbookclub.com or follow the events page of the Atheist and Christian Book Club on Facebook.